page three. And if you need a handout, I have extra handouts in front. Page three, let's compare answers. OK, page three, number three. Wait, think I can just find it. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, OK. Number three. It wants us to change some to two. OK, so. Rita is wearing. Can you change this? Yes, you can. So Rita is wearing two rings on her left hand. Number four. Rita is wearing, can you change this to two? No, you cannot because jewelry is uncountable. Jewelry just refers to all of the stuff that you wear at the same time. So you can't say two jewelry, you can only say some jewelry. Number five, I have some homework. Can you change this to two? Is it countable? No, homework is not countable. If you need to count homework, you can say assignments. Assignments is countable, but homework is not. Number six. Oh, I just said that. OK, so two assignments. Number seven, I have some jobs to finish. Yes, you can change this to two. Number eight, I have some work to do. No, work is not countable. When you count the word work, you're talking about works of art. Like something that has been created, but work as in job is uncountable. Number nine, I asked some questions. Yes, I asked two questions. Number 10, some information. No, information is uncountable. Number 11, I learned some new words today. Yes, you can say two words. Number 12, I learn some new vocabulary every day. No, vocabulary is a set of words. So vocabulary itself is uncountable. Vocabulary means more than one word, but the word vocabulary is uncountable. Questions? OK, next one. Using a lot of change some to a lot of if possible. OK, number three. These are the same sentences. <laughs> OK, so yes, if it's countable, you can change it to a lot of. So rings is countable. You can say a lot of rings. Number four, some jewelry. You can also say a lot of jewelry. Is this is this trolling us? Oh, OK, it's making sure you understand the concept. And the concept is. 
you can use a lot of for both countable and uncountable nouns. So the answer for every single question is to change some to a lot of. It just wants to make sure you think about each possibility. Questions? So you can use a lot of for countable and uncountable nouns. If you look at this phrase, a lot of, a lot, the word lot means portion, the part that belongs to you or that belongs to somebody. So when you cut a cake, what you're doing is you're separating the cake into different portions or different lots. So a lot of just means a group of, a portion of. Okay, page four. Add final S or ES as necessary without changing anything. And it very helpfully gives you the number of words that must be changed. Cool, okay, number two. Seven words, so it wants us to use the plural. Scientists divide living things into two groups. Plants and animals. Generally speaking, plants Stay in one place, but animals move around. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, that's seven words. OK. Number three, also seven words, so it also wants us to use the plural. Flowers. Grass is uncountable, so not grasses, grass. And trees grow every place where people live. Plants also grow in deserts, in oceans, on mountaintops, and in polar regions. The polar region is like the very north and the very south of the Earth. GD. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven words. OK, great. Um, usually, however, we would uh, more likely see the desert, the ocean, the mountaintop, etc. But the question wants us to give seven plurals. We're going to talk about the later today. Number four. Eight plurals. OK, so again, everything should be plural. Plants are useful to people. We eat them. We use them for clothing. We build houses from them. So houses is countable, but clothing is uncountable. If you need to count clothing, you would say pieces of clothing or articles of clothing. Um, or you can also say clothes for plural. Clothes. Yes, that one. OK. OK, we build houses from them. Plants are also important to our health. We get many kinds of beneficial drugs from plants. In addition, plants at this point, the author really should say they, but plants provide beauty and enjoyment to all our lives. That should be eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great. OK. Number five. Nine. OK, we want nine plurals. Crops. Are plants. That people grow for food. Nature can ruin crops. Bad weather, such as too much rain, rain is not countable. 
or too little rain, right? Little, so uncountable. We're going to talk about little in two weeks. Next week, next week. Can destroy fields of corn or wheat. So again, a kind of food is uncountable. Natural disasters, such as floods and storms, have caused farmers many problems since people first began to grow their own food. Is that nine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, that's nine. So when you do these questions, the key point is that when you see a word like disaster, you should know that it's countable and therefore there has to be some kind of word related to number before disaster or it should end in S. You can't simply just throw a countable noun into a sentence. So if you know this, you'll recognize that natural has nothing to do with numbers. So in fact, this needs something in front or something behind. And for this question, it wants you to make it into a plural, so you add S. I really hope that you're doing these questions at home, because if you're only writing down the answers now, it's not going to help you on the final exam. You need to practice th uh, trying to spot mistakes and noticing when you have to change things. Number six, food is a necessity for all living things. All animals and plants need to eat. Most plants take what they need through their roots and their leaves. The majority of insects live solely on plants. Many birds have a diet of worms and insects. Now, I said that food is uncountable but we don't eat worms and we don't eat insects. So in terms of human language, these are not food. But if you want to talk about these as food, like if I said, oh, my favorite kind of uh, cake is worm cake, then in that case, the word worm is uncountable. That's not a good example. My favorite kind of cake is worm. Right. In that case, it would be uncountable. But I, we don't eat worms. At least I don't eat worms. So for now, the word worm is countable. Reptiles eat small animals, eggs, and insects. Is that 15? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yes, 15. OK, do you have questions about this page? All right, page 5. Again, changing into plural if appropriate. Number two, there are many occupations in the world. Doctors take care of sick people. Pilots buy airplanes. Farmers raise crops. Shepherds take care of sheep. So you can tell what a shepherd is, right? Someone who takes care of sheep. The word shepherd is actually quite interesting because herd means a group of uh, 
animals with four legs, like horses, cows, sheep. So a ship herd is someone who gathers the sheep together to move them around and take care of them. Right, ship related to sheep herd gathering into herds and moving them. Number three, an architect designs buildings. Ah, so this is a trick question because it begins with N. So this is singular and therefore design should end in S. In English, the only time you have to change a verb to match a noun is if the noun is singular and the verb is in the present tense and the noun is in the third person. So it's not I or we and it's not you. All other nouns in the singular when matched with a present tense verb, the verb must end in S. So same reason, an archaeologist digs the ground to find objects from past civilizations. So you can tell that the word architect means uh, and the word archaeologist means uh, This is the American spelling of archaeologist. The British people like to add an A before the E. So in British English, archaeology is A-R-C-H-A-E-O-L-O-G-Y. Because the British are weird like that. Number four, the first modern computers were developed in the 1930s and 1940s. Computers were not commercially available until the 1950s. Number five, there are several factories in my hometown. The glass factory employs many people. Number six, kangaroos are Australian animals. They are not found on any of the other continents except in zoos. So kangaroo is the animal that uh, has like a pocket on its front. Taishu. And continent is like a big mass of land. Lu Kwai. Number seven, mosquitoes are found everywhere in the world, including the Arctic. So you only need to change one word. Mosquito, the small insect that bites you. Wenzi. And number eight, at one time, many people believed that tomatoes, sorry, were poisonous. This is actually a very interesting story. Why did people believe that tomatoes were poisonous? Tomatoes are actually a quite special part of the plant kingdom. It has properties that very few other plants have. One of those properties is if you combine iron with tomato, it does become poisonous. And guess how people used to cut tomatoes with an iron knife. So when they cut a potato with an uh, tomato with an iron knife, it did become poisonous and people did die. But the poison is not because of the tomato, it's because of the iron. Later, when we uh, developed stainless steel knives, gang, it was no longer poisonous. OK, do you have questions about this set of problems? Continuing. OK, so now it gives you the words that you should consider. Should the words in 
italics 斜体 end in s. Number two, good advice. Can advice be counted? No, advice is uncountable. If you need a countable noun, use suggestion. Suggestion is countable. Actually, I should I should emphasize this. Advice is not countable. So many people count this word. Advice is not countable. If you need to count advice, you can also say pieces of advice. Number three, I drink water when I'm hot and thirsty. Is water countable? No. Number four, do winning athletes need luck? Is luck countable? No, luck is a kind of substance. It's an abstract substance, but it's a substance. Number five, our country has made a lot of progress in the last 25 years. Is progress countable? No. You can. You can count progress as like instances of progress or like examples of progress, but in this sentence it says our country has made progress. You're not talking about specific examples. You're talking about the whole country. So in this case, progress is not countable. Number six. How many classes are you taking this semester? The answer is in the verb are. So this should be classes. Number seven. We received some facts from our lawyer. OK, first of all, do you guys know what a fax is? You have facts is what you want. A fax is in Chinese, we call this chuanzen. You know what chuanzen is? 好,你們用過嗎? Yeah. OK, so faxes are what we used to use before email when we needed to get a message somewhere very fast or like a document somewhere very fast. Um, and therefore, it, it's a kind of message. So just like a telephone call or an email, these are countable. And, and that's why it begins with some, right? Some well, no, you can use some for countable and uncountable, but faxes are countable. OK, questions about this page. All right, page six. It says that there are 10 errors related to subject verb agreement. So whether the subject is singular or plural and whether the verb matches the subject and 10 incorrect plural forms. So there are 20 mistakes. Let's see how many you caught. Dear Adelie, oh, how I long to be with you on this cold, cold day. Neither of the iron bars of my cell have kept me from dreaming about sweeping you away to our long planned vacation in Antarctica. So Adelie is in jail. Sorry, sorry. No, the author is in jail. Through the vast blue skies, speeding swiftly as wild turkeys go my heart. <laughs> it's a love letter. Either my jailers or my honey have taken over every thought in my brain. I never think about the fish in the sea. Every single one of my waking moments is devoted to you and to my 10 lawyers. The subject of this sentence is one. Every single one of my waking moments, the subject is one. Therefore, the verb should be is.
all the prisoners except for my cellmate have waited impatiently for your visit. So this is a kind of a trick question. Because you might think, well, should it be one subject or should it be all of these subjects? But the answer is it doesn't matter because if it, the subject is I, the verb should still be have. So whether it's one subject or many subjects, it's all have. Don't worry about the cellmate. Politics is the only thing on his mind. So some words that end in S are actually singular. Most of these words are fields of expertise, like economics, mathematics, politics, singular. Two months have passed, and everyone is impatient. The subject everyone is singular, right? It says one. So everyone is every single person. So this is singular. Everyone is impatient. I know you are busy, but the taxes are paid for new downhill racing skis are waxed sangla i know you love to ski and still you are not here here are two train uh, two tickets for the policemen you befriended. They can accompany you on the train. I know you hate to travel alone. Speaking of alone, pre, uh, please bring the loot from our last job. I need escape money. So from this sentence, you can guess the meaning of the word loot. Looks like the author and her, or I guess his, I don't know, partner are thieves. So their job is stealing, and the loot is what they get from stealing. And loot is uncountable. Think about it like money. It's dirty money, and money is uncountable. I need escape money. Also bring two gold watches, which are very handy for bribes. Love, Charlie. OK, is that 20? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. <gasps> I missed three. Or I missed four, I guess. Let's try again. Oh, how I long to be with you on this cold, cold day. Neither of the iron bars. Oh, OK, yeah, so the first one is. Neither of the iron bars of my cell has. Because neither means not one. There are two of them and neither one. Not a single one, so it's singular. Neither of the iron bars of my, of my cell has kept me from dreaming about sweeping you away to our long planned vacation in Antarctica, to the vast blue skies, right? Speeding swiftly as wild turkey goes my heart. OK, this is a bit harder to spot because the order is reversed as it does. The subject of this sentence is my heart. The verb is go. And then where does it go? The rest of the sentence through the vast blue skies, etc. So the subject is singular. The verb should end in S. Through the sky goes my heart goes. Ah, and there's another trick question. Turkey, Hoji, is irregular. Bugwaiza. Turkeys.
Well, no, it's not irregular. This is the rule for EY. If it ends in Y, it, it becomes IES. But if it ends in EY, you add S. Right? Think about the word key. If you have two keys, you just add S. So, okay, we added one, two, three. I think we're, we're missing one more. So let's keep going. Go my heart. Either my jailers or my money has. There we go. Either, right? One of the two. So it's singular. The verb has to be singular. Has. OK, that's 20. Questions? So, you know, this is kind of a, a funny little letter. It's very carefully written to trick you. The rules are clear, but often the, if the sentence is too long and there's a plural noun closer to the verb, the, the language sense sometimes will confuse you into making you want to change the verb into a plural because the noun that is closest to it is also plural. In these cases, you have to pay close attention to see whether that closest noun is the subject or not. And if it's not the subject, what is the subject? OK, so that's the homework. Today we're going to be talking about the determiner, specifically the definite article. In other words, V. Apparently there are there are more determiners than this one alone. But the word the is the one that causes the most problems. So we're going to focus on this word the. You already know that if a noun is countable and it is a singular noun, you must put the word a or un before the word. How do you choose? Use the word a uh, before a consonant sound, zing, and you use the word un before a vowel sound, mu ing. Notice I keep saying the word sound, not letter, sound. For example, Which one is correct? A university or an university? If you think a university is correct, raise your hand. If you think an university is correct, raise your hand. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, raise your hand. So was that watching you saw? OK, you, you guys just don't want to raise your hand. OK, so the answer is. A university. Because the word university begins with a Y sound. Right, U university. So it's not the letter. It's the sound. A consonant sound. That decides whether it begins with a or un. Now, as I keep telling you, there are exceptions. And the main exception is if the beginning sound is in a proper noun. So it's a name. For example,
These are the same sounds, right? University, UN, United States. But because this is a name, this is a name, we say, wait, hold on, it's the same rule, sorry. Uh, yes, so at this point, everything is consistent. Face on Yizu, right? The U sound, uh, UN, uh, United States. Here's, here's something else to pay attention to. Um, plural words in English end in a s or an s. Which one is correct? If you think it should be a uh, s, please raise your hand. If you think it should be un s, please raise your hand. Yeah, good. It is an s because the letter s begins with an e, right? S. This is a vowel, so you say un s. Uh, okay, thank you. So that is a uh and un. Now to the main topic, the or the. So first of all, how do you pronounce this word? Usually the rule is the plus consonant and the plus vowel. So like the planet, but the earth. If the second word begins with a vowel, zing, the saying, then you say the. When do you use this word? This word is very interesting because most languages don't have a similar word, and that's why it is one of the most common kinds of mistakes for anyone who's learning English as a second language. So not just students in Taiwan, but like Italians, Russians, Kenyans, anybody learning English as a second language finds this hard to truly get it right all the time. So if you're struggling, you're not alone. The rest of the world is with you. Let's see if we can clarify this. You use the word the. It's called a definite article. So when the word after the is defined, it is specific, it is exactly the only thing you are talking about, then you would use the word the. So for example, the easiest way to the easiest example is if there is only one. So the tallest building, the lowest score, etc. There's only one. If there's only one, you add the word the. Now, sometimes there is only one in a specific context or in a specific situation. So for example, the teacher. Obviously, there are many teachers in the world. So when you say the teacher, you are actually providing a context or a situation where there is supposed to be only one teacher. Sometimes you will have more than one teacher in a specific situation. The teachers at my school. So now it's not just one classroom, it's the whole school. And so when you say the teachers, you are saying this is the only group of teachers that I'm talking about. So not all the teachers in the world, but only the teachers at this one place, this one school.
So that's so like adding the word the can create a context. Um, so like sometimes at the beginning of a story, it will say something like the man walked down the road or something as the first sentence. At this point, you don't know what man, you don't know what road. The story is telling you in this situation, there's only one man you should pay attention to, and there's only one road that you should be thinking about. So the grammar creates the situation. Sometimes the word the refers to an abstract idea. So like um, the beginning of the famous novel 1984 by George Orwell includes this phrase. The clock struck 13. If you use an analog clock, the one with the hands, this would be impossible. So this tells you that the story takes place in a very different world. But notice the word the, the clock. In any given home, there's usually more than one clock. So the clock here is not referring to any specific clock. It just means the time. It turned 13. The clock struck 13 just means the time is now 13. You can also use the word the for uncountable nouns. Love as a substance is uncountable. Money is usually uncountable. But if you are talking about a specific situation regarding the love or regarding the money. In the first example, you can always ask this question, right? What love? The love that I have for him. It is giving you a specific instance of this love. The second example, what money? The money that I owe her. It's a specific instance of money. So even though it is uncountable, when you have a specific situation with a specific focus on this noun, you can also use the word the. Another way to think about this, and this is going into next semester's content, but if you add the relative clause, 关系代名词, this is a determining relative clause or a restricted relative clause. It's describing the noun and it's saying, I'm only talking about the noun that fits this description. There's a lot of love in the world. I'm only talking about this kind of love. And because it has defined and restricted the noun, you therefore should add the word the because it is a specific instance, a specific example of this noun. And then you have things like uh, the three of them, which means those three. This gets harder to think about from a grammar perspective, but what it means is there are three people, that's the them, and all three of them, we're now talking about all three of these people. So because it is everybody in this situation, you add the word the. If you say, 
them, that means that the them is more than three. And out of everybody, three people. But if you say the three of them, that means that the them only has three people. It's everybody. It's an, the specific group of people. So you would add the word the. And then finally, one last example I want to give you is the type. We saw this last week when we were doing like, you know, the bird and the insect and the egg. For example, The pen is mightier than the sword. Uh, in Chinese, I guess we translate this as or something like that. The idea is that um, propaganda is more powerful than force. Something like that. Uh, this phrase was made popular during the American Revolution. Notice the word the. Are we talking about a specific pen? Or a specific sword? No, we're talking about a kind of thing. So here the word pen and the word sword are uncountable. When you add the word the like this, it makes this countable word uncountable. The kind of thing that is a pen is mightier than the kind of thing that is a sword. So we also have like the young, which means the young people. The Germans. Everybody who is a German, right? This specific group or like the Irish, Irish, singular, plural are the same word. Just this specific group. So that's the logic, and we're going to practice a lot to see if we can cultivate some kind of language sense. Yugan. OK, do you have questions? OK, when we come back, we'll start doing the practice questions after having a presentation from group seven. For now, let's take a short break.
Okay, now let's welcome group seven to give the final midterm presentation this semester. Hi everyone, we are Group 7 and today we will talk about uh, doing what works. Anna Mothers, Kamas and Beyond. Oh, this is our contents. The first is Kamas rules. Second is Unravels, commas, and beyond. Third is conclusion. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Mandy, and today I will uh, talk about the commas rules. There are six common rules. And I will tell the first two rules. First, if those uh, seven coordinating conjunctions like and, but, for, or, nor, so, and yet are uh, between two independent classes, we need to use the comma to divide into the same heads. There is the Example for I must leave here now or I can't catch the last train. Uh, we use the comma before or which is one of the of the seven or the native congestions and to separate the center and next is second use the commas before the main class and after the introductory class such as after because and when and introductory phrase such as uh, infin infinitive phrase and absolute phrase. And the introduction word, in introductory words such as whatever, furthermore, and meanwhile, looking at the, sen uh, the example, when I arrive at the cafe, I will call you. Um, there is the an introductory phrase, phrase when at the beginning of the sentence and the main class is I will call you. Therefore, we use the comma uh, before the main class. And the next one will talk about the other two words. And for the third rule, um, comma can be used to um, separate those um, the, the cross to describe um, the, the object in the sentence. For example, in um, in this uh, sentence, uh, Victor and outstanding athletes went to England for training this summer. And the common here, the comma here is for um, describing is to separating uh, the description for Victor, which is um, uh, Victor, who is an outstanding athlete, and then um, um, and then describe uh, what he did for the summer. So, uh, uh, with comma, we can um, separate those clauses we um, 
we want uh, to as a description for um, for anyone or anything uh, in our sentences. And also um, for the fourth rule, uh, we can use we can also use a comma to separate those um, uh, the phrases and the clauses in in our sentences. Um, like in this example, um, Spain, France, and Germany, and we can see uh, we use um, comma after Spain and France, and between uh, and bef um, before uh, the conjunction and like the first rule, we have to add a comma here uh, to describe um, to, to to showcase our our examples in in in, in the sentence. Comma rules five. Use commands to separate two or more coordinate adjectives that describe the same noun. Be sure never to add an extra command between the final adjective and the noun itself or to use comma, comma with non coordinate ad adjectives. Example sentence that the big hairy monster grabbed down at me. Thus, Uh, put a comma after the B. Next, comma, comma rules five, six. Use comma to set off all geographical name, item in date, expect the month and day. Addresses expect except the street number and name and title in names example sentence that on october 3rd 2015 jeff smith's marketing di uh, director at intel traveled to 14 appeal way in roma italy uh, as you can see from powerpoint comma are used of the item and in date title in name and address. And next we're gonna talk about anomalous commas and beyond. The first thing is about the rigidity of the rules may hinder necessary actions. For example, compliance with the red light ban can prevent accidents, but drivers' refusal to move forward in front of broken red light may lead to mo more dangerous situations. So as you see, the rigidity of the rules sometimes cause this kind of situation. And the consequences of extreme application of policies and rules. Even sometimes, even if the starting point is good, negative problems may still occur after strictly following the rules. So for example, the school has formulated a policy to prohibit teachers from touching students, but the teacher's refusal to hug students who have just been bullied on campus may make students feel abandoned and desperate. In this kind of situation, also teacher applied the rule too strictly, so it caused more negative problems. So it emphasizes again that when we use commas, we don't need to be too strict for the rules. And the next is about the legitimacy of informal rules and situational use. It could depending on the specific situation, but sometimes it's just better to give up a rule. For example, break the custom of not wearing white in winter and in the restaurant, even if the food is cold, I don't want to take the tableware from the next table. And the necessity of challenging the established rules, because in some case, violation of laws and official policies may be correct. For example, Mohammed Yunus challenges the rules of banks not borrowing money and created the field of microfinance. And millions of people around the world got rid of poverty. So it means if you have any objections about the commerce rules, sometimes you can break the rules 
break the rules. You could be correct. And the last, put punctuation as dynamic tool, so sometimes we need to be violated to achieve the expected result. So in certain cases, inserting commas may not conform to the commas rules, but it is necessary for communication. With the assistance of a comma, it works perfectly and without then let's impeach comma. It wouldn't work at all. For example, nurses who can retire from their job at age 62. <clears throat> Commas can even be justified on purely stylistic grounds. A comma carves out two end positions for the statement, therefore two points of emphasis where otherwise there would be just one. For example, white men and women continue to run things badly. The comma rules are not the, on the only rules of grammar that a human being in doubt with agency with will break now and then. <clears throat> Sometimes going beyond grammar rules can be more effective for communication. <clears throat> Writing situations differ as to how much use of fragments will officially be contained, but one should push the envelope when they are what the situations called cost for in terms of cons consensus, consensus of impact. Not all sentences need to follow traditional grammar rules. The most important thing is that the sentence conveys the meaning according to the situation. Okay, and our conclusion is first comma, not just as rules, but as storytellers. And next is an exploration beyond conversations. For example, complaints with the red light ban can prevent accidents, but the drivers refuse to make to move forward in front of broken red light may lead to more dangerous situations. And that is our reference. Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, so thank you to group seven. And they bring up a very interesting and important idea, especially for grammar class. Uh, according to the author and you guys agree right with this idea. Yeah, sometimes going beyond grammar rules can be more effective for communication. In this class, we talk about what is correct and what is incorrect, but sometimes it's not that important to be entirely correct. So the author gives two examples. This sentence. Nurses who can retire from their jobs at age 62. If you take out this comma, then it looks like you're, you're talking about nurses who can retire from their jobs at age 62. This would not be a complete sentence. But what you're actually saying is nurses who are able to do so choose to retire from their jobs at age 62. So this comma is ungrammatical, but actually makes this sentence clearer. The other example is white men and women continue to run things badly. This comma is unnecessary, but by making you pause before the last word, it emphasizes the last word. It makes you really focus on that last word. So it communicates more clearly, even if the grammar is not exactly correct. And I think this is very important. So even when we are talking about what is right and what is not, please remember, especially in your writing class, please remember it sometimes is better 
not to be 100% correct. Thank you. OK, and then finally we have. Finally, we have one last example of when to use the word the. Previously, we talked about the UN. It is. An organization, right? The United Nations. You add the word the because the actual noun is nations which nations the united nations this specific group of nations some countries in the world are not a member of the un as i'm sure most of you know countries like taiwan so when you're talking about the united nations you're talking about the organization but on a grammar level, you're talking about those nations that are part of this organization. That's why we also say the US, because the US is the United States. The which states? The states that are united into this country, the United States. Now, the exception to this rule is if the organization can be said as one word so for example unesco this is but if you expand it if you give the full name then you have to add the words up the united nations uh educational science and cultural organization. So when you give the full name, you have to add the because you're talking about the organization. But when you give the acronym, if you can say this as one word, we don't say UNESCO, we say UNESCO. So it's a name and for names, we don't have to add the, right? You don't say the James. You don't say the Russia. These are names. So this is the main exception. If you can say the name, the acronym, the abbreviated version of the name as one word, you do not add the word the. Now, because this is English, even the exception has exceptions. So for example, World Health Organization, we do not say the who. We say, uh, we do not say who, we say the WHO. So it can be said as a word, but we don't. We spell out WHO. And because it's not said as a word, you add the word the in front. But even this has an exception. And the exception is if you're talking about a rock band, a group of musicians, there is a band called The Who. Uh, and because they are a band, you add the word the in front of their name. Um, right, so rock bands, right? So like the Beatles, Beatles, because they are the name of a group, a, a, a rock group or music group, we add the word the. And then also some other names that begin with the, the name of a ship, the Titanic. The name of a ship, you add the word the. What else? If there's only one, right? So the 
fourth winner. There's only one person in fourth place. So you have to say the fourth or the whatever. I think that's most of the common cases. Yeah, if there are even more exceptions that we see in the practice, I will point them out to you. OK, do you have questions about the? I'm sure you have lots of questions. The answer is really you have to have the language sense. You have to have that intuition. What the French call the je ne sais quoi, that without which it is not. OK, so let's look at the practice questions. Page seven. Very simply, correct the errors. H how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five. OK, so correct the errors. Five questions. I'll give you four minutes. OK, let's compare answers. Let's make this a bit more interesting. 
Number one, oh, look at moon. It's beautiful tonight. Ye Man Ru. Are you here? Okay, is there anything wrong with this sentence? The moon, good. Why? Yes, there's only one moon, so you should change that to the moon. Good. In fact, some people will insist that it should be the moon. Because you're not talking about any moon, Weixing. You're talking about our moon. Number two, I saw a cat and a bird outside my window. Cat was trying to catch a bird, but it didn't succeed. Bird flew away. OK, there are three mistakes. Liu Zhenzhen? Hi, did you find three mistakes? OK, which ones did you find? OK, so here, right? This one, good. The cat, OK, and what else did you find? So the very next one here, yeah? OK, the bird, yes. The third one is here. The bird flew away. At this point, you only have one cat and one bird. So after this first sentence, every time you mention the cat or the bird, you have to add the. Numero tres. The birds have the wings. Many insects have wings too. OK, there are two mistakes in this one. Gaoyichan. OK, did you find two mistakes? OK, so the bird, the birds is wrong, right? So you change this to birds, good. And the second mistake? Yes, it should be simply wings, right? Good. Birds have wings. The first sentence, we don't know what birds, we don't know what wings, so it's simply plural. Number four, we all look for happiness. Oyanchi, did you find a mistake in number four? Right, so it should simply be happiness. Why? Okay, very close. Happiness is a general concept, but sometimes general concepts can be counted. In uh, or can be yes. In this case, it is uncountable because happiness is a substance. That's the reason. Right? You can have luck. You can have love. You can have health. You can have happiness. It's a kind of substance, and so it's uncountable. Uh, and uncountable nouns can have the word the. But again, this is the first sentence. We don't know what kind of happiness you're talking about. So it's better not to have the. There's more than one kind of happiness. Number five. Samborong. Hi, did you find a mistake in number five? I have the book. OK, this is good. Uh, Correct. Because in this sentence, you're saying I have some kind of book. Why would you say this? Either you would say I have books, like I have books, or you might say I have a book, 
Or you might say, I have the book that everybody is talking about, or I have the book that everybody wants. The point is book is countable. You have to have something in front of or behind the word book. Questions? OK, good. OK. Next. Six questions. I'll give you another four minutes. OK, let's compare answers. Number one, it's beautiful today. Sun is shining and sky is clear. There are two mistakes. Where are you? Are you here? Hi. Did you find two mistakes? OK. Good. The sun and the sky, because there's only one sun, and wherever you're standing in the world, there's only one sky. I said that very specifically because you can actually say different skies, which means the sky in different locations. But if you only have one person, then there's only one sky. Two, there is a boy on a swing and a girl is pushing him. Boy is about five years old and girl is about eight years old. 
Hi, are there any mistakes in this sentence? Okay, so the boy. Good, the girl. Yes, you already mentioned a boy, a girl. You are now talking about this boy, this girl. Number three, the penguins live in Antarctica. The polar bears don't live in Antarctica. Uh, Zhang Ziyan, are you here? Yes, are there mistakes in number three? Okay, this one is something new because this one wants you to delete the the. We don't know which penguins, we don't know which polar bears, just in general. Another way to say this is the penguin lives, etc. In this case, you are not talking about actual penguins. You're talking about penguins as a type of animal, a type. Number four, which is more important, the love or the money? Hong Wenxing, are you here? Okay, let's try another one. Pu uh, Yu. Are there mistakes in this one? Good. Love and money are substances, so they are uncountable. And in this case, this is the first time they are mentioned. We don't know what kind of love. We don't know what kind of money. So you don't have to add the, you don't have to add S, you don't have to add a. You can just throw the words out there. Good. Number five, what, A, what does this word mean? B, do you have dictionary? Look up word in dictionary. Uh, let's see. Zeng Han. Do you have a dictionary? Good. Okay, look up. the word in the dictionary. In this situation, A is already asking about a specific word. So when B mentions the word, it is already a specific word. You must say the word. OK, but the other ones are correct. Uh, B already asks, do you have a dictionary? So the next time it's mentioned, it should be the dictionary. But in fact, even if B does not first mention a dictionary, you can still say, look up the word in the dictionary. It's like the clock struck 12. It's not a specific clock, it just means time. Look it up in the dictionary does not mean a specific dictionary. It just means the kind of place where you can find the meaning of a word. And number six, A, watch out. There's a bee buzzing around. B, where? I don't see it. Ouch, it stung me. I didn't see B, but I felt it. Hi, is there a mistake in this sentence? The B, good. The last one. Are there other mistakes in this sentence? No, correct. Uh, so because A already mentioned this specific B, you must say the B. It is the same B. Okay, questions about this page? That was fun. We should do this more often. Okay, so uh, 
no homework. We finished all of the relevant questions. Next week, we're going to be talking about three things. Possessives, so his, her, my, yours. Contractions, from do not to don't, from cannot to can't. And quantifiers, some, all, many, none, few, a little. So that's next week. A uh, quick reminder, your peer review sheets are due tonight at midnight. Everybody has to submit one peer review sheet. OK, see you next week.